So, fucking autofocus. Uh, gonna try something a little new, a little different. Tired of using that camera setup. I can't seem to get the white balance right on it. I'm just plumb fucking tired of messing with it. Um, I have ordered a Black Widow card to go into my computer to uh, to be able to, to do um, 4K image capture using an actual video camera instead of using the, the, the Canon uh, Mark V, I think, that I've got back there. So, uh, gonna try this for a little bit until that new uh, capture card comes in. And a uh, little bit about what's been going on. So, I know a lot of you know I haven't done a video in a couple, few weeks, actually. Um, just been doing the Nomad Show. And... Part of the reason for that is I've been really deep in a lot of projects. I've been working on some vendor websites, so I've done a few of those. Um, I'm working on something that's going to be pretty groundbreaking for the vaping industry, um, kind of a super secret website project. I haven't, I've showed kind of the framework to a few people, um, but the majority of uh, the majority of folks who have even seen it has only seen about 10% of it. Still a long way to go on it. Um, working on my own box, uh, stabilized hybrid wood type situation prototype hopefully done this week um lot going on um so other than getting to the to the weekly show hadn't really been getting to a lot of reviews but i've got a lot of shit i need to review and now this setup is really convenient doesn't require a lot of work so please let me know in the video description if the quality is as good better worse you know what do you think um just as far as the look and you know the feel and i don't quite have the framing with the computer behind me since it's in front of me but, with all that said, what we're going to talk about today is the Boss 3000 from Vaporized Nomads, and here we go. But, before we go, I've already recorded so much of this fucking video, now I've got to go back and do. So, before, the, before we go, um, in this video, when we go to, uh, to a video I, I shot at the machine shop, um, Adam announces a giveaway, and Adam is going to be giving away one of these boxes uh, on our show. Um, your design, uh, and very simple. All you gotta do is join a Facebook group and make a comment on this video. So super simple. There, I'm gonna give it away on the Nomad Show. On the what's the date? I'm gonna give it away on the Nomad Show. That's Tuesday nights at eight central. Um, on that will be the fifth. So all you'll have to do is join the Vaporize Nomad Facebook group. Link will be in the description and leave a comment on this video with your Facebook name. That way we can just reference name. Make sure you're in the group. Done. So now that that said, here we really go. So this video is going to be a little longer than usual because um, I've got I've actually got some video that I took uh, during the manufacturing process. Um, I've got I am going to do an up close on it. Um, I actually also did a pool test on it. Um, there's a video on Facebook you guys can see on whether it's uh, waterproof or water resistant. Um, but first thing I want to cover, just kind of right off the bat, is um, any any you know concern or chatter or issue with whether there is any bias on me reviewing this device. Um, first off, I didn't not not only did I buy this device, um, I also bought this device, which is my wife's. And so I'll tell you the story on how we got to these boxes. Adam was making something called the Mod Three Thousand. It was a, uh, a Raptor chip box, you know, something kind of like a hex home, something in that, that kind of area. And uh, they only came in green. Well, one day, Adam decided that he was going to uh, just take, just, you know, get an idea on whether people was interested in other colors, which Nomad's color was green. So he ordered quite a few, and uh, I got one, a serial number eight, I believe. Um, and it was this beautiful teal blue. And I don't know where the box is. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. But it was the most beautiful color of like blue teal I had ever seen. Um, I absolutely loved it. Well, that box didn't have enough power for me. Um, because Well, it had plenty of power. It's just I couldn't build as low as I like to build on it without endangering the chip. I think the recommended build down, down or floor was somewhere around like 0.2. Um, but I like to build down to like 0 .08, 0 .09, 0 .1, 0 .12. And with that Raptor chip, that was a little dangerous. So Adam had another box and that, now he was sourcing the boxes from this fella 
who also made a box called the Physician's Box. The Physician's Box was a SX350J chip, 200 watt box, um, really nice form factor, and I asked Adam if he could get me a Physician's Box uh, in that blue teal color since he was sourcing the box from the same, and sourcing and building the Mod 3000 from the same feller company that was building the Physician's Box. He said, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, well, one thing led to another, and uh, Adam decided he wanted to start building some boxes, and the Boss 3000 kind of replaced the spot in his inventory for that regulated 200 watt box. Well, I've already got you know my 260 bucks paid on this physician's box, and uh, instead of and he gave me the option, do you want the physician's box or do you want the Boss 3000? I said, well, I definitely I'll take the Boss 3000 because I've always preferred the DNA 200 chip over the SX350J chip, right? So um, he starts making the boxes, and then we're going to get to my serial number, um, which is by the way triple X. So he gets to uh, serial numbers, and I don't know if I went around, or but a, lo a lot of early serial numbers got picked up really quick, even though technically I had bought the first one. Um, so I went and I asked him, I said, well, can I get serial number triple X to suggest, you know, prototype, um, if you're going to stay with numbered serials? Because uh, I wanted a low serial, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, plenty of boxes got out there. I didn't care to be first. Um, and so that's how I ended up with the triple X serial number. But, you know, on the issue of whether or not there is any potential bias, uh, I think Adam will be the first to tell you, um, and you can see it in the Nomad show, we, we don't always agree on things. Um, I, on, on, the, on our show, on our live show that we do every week, I've, I, I said that I thought his juice was, was shit. Um, you know, and so I don't pull any punches, you know, even with my friends. And... You know, it's not a paid review. It's not a uh, it's not a, a gift product. Um, I've got every dollar in this that everybody of the hundred that are out there. Um, I'm invested in this box the same way everyone else is, and the only one that I know of out of these because I see the list pretty regular when I go up there. Um, only one of them has been returned, and it was due to just plum fucking stupidity. So, you know. I'm the first to tell him, especially you know, in 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 his in his manufacturing work and his processes, even helping him, you know, in some ways, maybe trying to help him improve his processes, make suggestions. Um, I don't pull any punches, and I don't plan to pull any punches on this because this is a good. It's going to be a good review for the product because I believe me and the hundred other people who have one all will agree this is an amazing fucking box. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's perfect. So I really wanted to get the bias out of the way. So for, now let's have a vape. Hell, which one? This is a new juice I got in called from FFDA. I don't have the bottle here handy. But it's kind of a citrusy one. It's their citrus vape, if anyone knows the FFDA one. Uh, but I don't know the name. Hmm. Good, good, good stuff. This is a juice. I don't even know the company. Um, they carry it up in Amazing Vapors, um, but it's called Grandma's Grandma's Cookies, and it's like an oatmeal, like a really, really, really. You can actually taste the oatmeal. It's like an oatmeal cookie, frosted with a touch of cinnamon. I mean, and it is an amazing juice. <coughs> so, about the Boss Three Thousand. First off, there are quite a few people out there in the market now making DNA 200 boxes. You know, you got the mod, uh, you got Mad Modder, you've got um, and a lot of really shitty boxes. Um, I've seen a couple of nice boxes. Uh, I've, and there are some other really, really nice DNA 200s. But there's a mix, like in a recipe, like, you know, with the right ingredients, it's going to taste better. And so, you know, I would like to try to compare it to, like, Say a Mad Modder box. It's a little bit smaller. Um, when we get on the inside, you'll see, if you're familiar with that box, you'll see the difference in the care that was given to the, to the build, build quality on the inside. Um, the custom, customization, the infinite customization. 
Um, I, I have small hands, and this fits very, very nice for me. Um, it's got an 1800 3S LiPo in it. Um, and, you know, it's everything that I wanted out of a DNA 200 device. I had a Vapor Shark. Vapor Shark had that 900 milliamp hour battery. Um, I could literally blow. I could literally blow through that 900 3S in two hours of hard vaping. So that's unacceptable. Luckily, or fortunately, with that particular device, since we brought it up, it does fast charge. Um, so I know if that can fast charge, I'm sure this can too. And it's just figuring out, you know, how that happens or how to make that work. But that is one thing that I haven't figured out how to do on this that I could do with the the charging brick. It was, uh, it was an actual wall plug that had a you know micro USB on it. So something about the Vapor Shark with the same chip performed on the charging side. It, it charged much quicker. But again, didn't get through even just even the first, even the morning hours. Not necessarily not even on not 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 even trying to consider all day. So, taking it up close is probably going to be the best way to really show you what I meant by it when I said it's the recipe and the things that's put into it that, for me, make it the best, best DNA 200 box that's on the market. So, let's take it up close. Down here. No, it's down there. All right, so now we're going to be up close on the Boss 3000. I am not going to use autofocus, so if we make some dramatic changes, I'll reach over here and grab my mouse. And uh, right there, I grab my mouse and do a little bit of adjustments to uh, to get us to the right focus angle. Um, when we get to the very end, I will I'm going to turn the gain all the way down so that you can read the screen uh, as well as you would need to because of the programming that he's done. I want you to really see that. Um, and so other than that, let's start. Let's talk about the box. So what do we got here? Um, the start's really small. It's four inches tall. Um, I had the exact dimensions somewhere. Um, but I, know, I can tell you it's right around four inches tall. The overall width, a 25 millimeter atomizer, fits on it really, really nice. Uh, just give you some 25 millimeter reference. And with a 30, you have just a little bit of over overhang, but a 25 fits fine. So as far as the width, you're kind of somewhere around 27 millimeters on the width. Um, on the depth, um, I actually don't know the depth of it. Uh, if I was to guess, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of about 65 or 70 millimeters. I haven't actually measured it, but I do know it fits my hand absolutely perfectly. Now for me, one of the things that I like most about it is the ability for customizing. Um, there have been some crazy things people have decided to put on these boxes. For me, I decided to do uh, you know, my name with my slogan on a mission. Um, and decided to put Ganesha on my box. Ganesha has a special spot for me, even though I'm not a Buddhist anymore. But uh, it does still, Ganesha definitely still holds a uh, place in my heart. The box is cast aluminum. It's available right now in, ooh, I think, I, th I think four or five colors. And I've seen pink, I've seen black, I've seen uh, kind of a grayish brown color. Um, green. And then, of course, there is the green color. And I'm sure other colors are, are to come because I know the fellow who, who actually does the cast aluminum on, the, on these boxes who makes the Physicians mod makes many, 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 many colors. So I'm sure we'll see expansion of the colors as, the, uh, as it progresses on down the road. Now, as far as the, uh, the, the build quality and what sets this apart from other boxes. Um, first off, of course, you've got a little notch for your finger there to get that apart. I want to get the focus going now. I put out a challenge um, on Instagram for somebody to go out and find a box that has a cleaner that the, that is that the wiring is any cleaner that the uh, you know the, the whoever made the box went to the took the time put the care and attention it takes to get the inside of a box that clean. I had some people post some pictures of some boxes um, and you know yes there's some space there's some space up here. Um, so maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe you could potentially put a bigger battery in here if it was narrower and taller, um, but then probably not. Um, what impressed me the most is not seeing a bunch of wires, you know, in this space that a lot of companies use, or on the opposite side, 
where they have red and white, red and red and white, or red and yellow, or red and green. You know, all these different wires kind of bundled up down and in here. Um, that's not clean. You know, uh, I have not seen a box anywhere. Even like, like take my Vapor Shark for example. You know, I mean that is a a com company that does huge business, makes tons and tons of boxes. But once you take that side door off, you've got all that extra wire, you've got all that extra, you know, that's just not needed. You know, every bit of this is nice, black, heat shrinked, no excess wire, um, and, and no reason to bundle any wire up. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it's completely inaccessible either, because this battery, uh, well, if I have something, I still can if I want to. I still can take this battery out. So this is a user serviceable type of situation if somewhere down the road you decided you did want to, uh, you needed to replace your battery, um, wanted to replace your battery. Um, so it's not something that is completely, you know, kind of locked down. Um, I've even asked Adam, you know, why did you even put a door on it? Um, and his answer actu actually was, and it makes sense, is so people could see how clean the work is on the inside because that is just pride and craftsmanship and it's absolutely beautiful there on the box. Now as far as the door, and is there any door rattle? Now, um, let me see. On this box, there is no door rattle on this box, none whatsoever. Another point of craftsmanship, and actually we'll show you a video later, is these 510 connections. You can actually see how in the door, you can see how in the door you actually he actually mills down the box in order to set that that 510 connection absolutely flush. I mean, absolutely flush. There's no, it does not stick up even one thousandth of an inch. Um, he uses a, um, a a really really expensive milling machine and has tolerances down to absolutely perfect. Um, but basically, this is done by hand. Um, these boxes do not come with, a re with this recess for this, for this uh, 510 to come in. Um, the only thing these boxes come with is the pre-cutouts for these two buttons, uh, the screen, and this. Uh, Adam chose to use a, a MyTech switch instead of using the onboard switch. Um, these MyTech switches are better switches and also available in different colors, and that's where we talked about kind of pricing options when we went to talking about that. Um, so in order to recess this 510, that takes equipment, and again, we got a video to show that. Um, the door, like I said, you know, anything, pretty well, just about anything that you can think of that can be done in one color. So uh, any kind of image that can be vectorized into one color can be turned into the side of your Boss 3000. Um, you can, you could very easily have a uh, shit. I mean, I. I, I, guess can, I actually can give you one example because I was trying to help uh, Pam Robbins from the Voluptuous e Juice. I was trying to help her do her box with her design and it actually had clouds in it. Well, clouds is not something that's going to translate over into uh, clouds is not going to translate into a graphic. Tr clouds are not going to translate into an image. But like this Ganesh, it was a highly, highly detailed picture whenever I initially took it. And I actually thought like, and you can see like up in the hair, the jewelry the uh, the fellow who does the laser engraving is just top top notch um i don't know how many microns it is i'm actually trying to find out uh but the detail absolutely is there and so you know, like i said people are getting all kinds of crazy shit on boxes they're getting skulls they're getting zombies they're getting iron man they're getting fucking you just couldn't imagine the shit people are putting on boxes they're license plates they're um uh, if you think of it I know Adam will put in the effort to try to put it on the box. Um, now there is a bit of a process to order, and I'll, I'll go into that later on in the video. Um, you can just order one straight off the website for like the two forty-nine, two fifty-nine, I think. Um, but you know, for thirty bucks, forty bucks, you can turn it into just basically anything you can imagine. So that's this box. That's my box, my special triple X box. Uh, but now we're going to go over to my wife's box. Now, my wife's box also, so we'll go on the inside look, you can see it's the same, absolutely beautiful, clean work, you know, no extra, no excess, no, you know, 
bunch of junk crammed into it. I mean, it's just absolutely exactly what is needed to fill that box and to get it to get that functional. And and actually, if you look right here, and I've got a video that shows how this is done, you might see right down here. There's a little bit of a silver spot. What he actually does is he goes in by hand on every single box after he cuts this perfectly flush um, recess here. He actually goes in and he mills down um, one of these nubbins um, in order to actually fit this bigger, larger size battery in it. And, and that's that lack of effort in other boxes that are the exact same size where you see a 1400 or a 1600 mile battery. And so it's just that little extra touch that got a little bit more battery life in the same size box. So now on the door, you know, and I said I you know, definitely wasn't going to pull any punches. Um, this is a fault of, I would say, the, uh, I would say it's some on Adam, some on the engraver, in that the guy, the, especially the engraving guy, you know, he said, I, I can handle it whenever this, this graphic got sent over. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Any of you guys who know about a transparent PNG or what a transparent PNG is, when you export it from Photoshop, what identifies it as transparent is the little checkerboard pattern that is behind it. Um, Adam didn't know that. You know, Adam, Adam, Adam's an ESIG guy. He's a, he's a machinist guy. He's a salesman. But he's not a graphics guy, so that's not something he knew. And he left it up to the hands of the, uh, of the engraver. And the engraver and Adam, I think, both just assumed, well, that's what he sent. That's probably what he wanted. Um, then I got to explain it, and of course I'm gonna offer absolutely offered to replace the door, and I'm gonna have that done, uh, and that's you know that's kind of the ding that I've kind of found so far, and again they offered uh, to to replace the door, so you know nothing I can really bitch too much about. Now I showed you on my battery, my door I had absolutely no no wobble, no uh, looseness at all. My wife's there's just I mean, literally a, a tick. It's not. It's not floppy. I mean, it's it's it is very very sturdy. But my wife does have a little tick. Um, but it is there, so you know, definitely something to point out. So that's my box. That's my wife's box. And you know, you look at the engravings again. All of the the back and front can be done. You can customize the side. You can customize the bottom. And I actually, I was talking to a guy the other night talking about wanting to actually put something up here on the top. So, you know, it's all, this box for me is all about what can you get or what can you imagine that you want to put on here um, and hit that $290 ceiling. Uh, if, you, if you want it on here, you can pretty well get it on here if it can be done with one color and a vector image. So the menu system. We talk, I talked about the menu system and I got to turn the gain all the way down for this because I want you to be able to see that because this is where effort this is effort that there's not a single manufacturer on the market has gone into this level of effort so to hell we're trying to uh, get that adjusted the gain adjusted and the brightness so you can see this menu this is as clear as I was wanting you to be able to um, so now we go into like I've talked about through most of the video is the extra stuff the special stuff that the effort that was gone into um, that you just don't see in other devices, even more expensive DNA 200 devices um, or DNA 200 devices kind of in the same price range that doesn't have the same battery capacity and that's the pre-programming. So I remember when I got my first DNA 200 below, um, I literally could not get it out of, out of camphal mode or out of, wattage, out of variable wattage mode over into temperature control mode without plugging into eScribe. Now most people, I would say not most people, but a lot of people, um, they're not necessarily technically savvy enough to go in and fuck with that software. They just want to use the device. And when it comes to just using the device, well, if you can't even get into temperature control without going in and learning how to use the software, then I think that is a major failure on manufacturer's parts. And I'm so glad that he thought about doing this because I'm going to be honest, until I bought this box, I didn't know that you even could do this. And I'm really fucking proficient at this stuff. So every one of these boxes come with this pre-done. Um, so to show you basically, instead of doing a, a, a six click lock up here, if you do a double lock here with the up and down, then that puts you into this lock mode. Any, a triple tap puts you into 
all of the different pre-programmed settings that are in the box already. You've got, uh, okay, we've got the Canthal, NI200, Nickel 200, 304 stainless, 316 stainless, titanium, nichrome, and now titanium too. Some of the older boxes actually did have a copper setting and you can make, safely vape uh, a certain specific kind of copper wire, but to avoid the, uh, the dangers that um, doing that wrong could afford, um, the copper was replaced with a second titanium profile. So when we talk about the pre-programmed files that are on here, um, you know, they're not just generic shit that was grabbed off the internet somewhere. Like take the nickel one for example. You know, I know I watched him for two weeks using different types of setups with nickel with nickel coils on it, either pre-made coils or self-built coils with decent space coils, because I know he vapes at 400 or 580, 540 degrees, and he knows 540 degrees. And so, you know, in adjusting the going into eScribe and adjusting the profile and how how fast the wire ramps up in temperature and all that shit that I have no fucking clue how to do. Um, he went in and basically made what I would think you could call a average, a good average profile that would span across multiple NI200 wires. Because one guy's nickel 200, I guarantee you, is different from another guy's nickel 200. So the profiles were definitely torture tested for a good amount of time. And that's some of the extra work that was put into it. Same thing was done with the 304, the 316, the titanium, the nichrome. Um, and that was to get profiles in there that people out of the box would not have to plug it up to eScribe and would be able to use just about anything that they could go out and buy today. Um, now I want to show you one little trick that's something that I didn't know because I actually have gotten stuck in temperature control and couldn't figure out how to get out. Um, so if you end up with a Boss 3000, I'll show you how you get out. What you have to do is, is one be unlocked and you actually set the temperature to off. Once you set it to off, then you can get over and change back into wattage mode. And uh, so that's one, that's my little, I guess my little tip on that. Because I got stuck in temperature control and had to chase him down and figure out how the hell to get it out. So I think that's it of the up close. Uh, I've got probably an hour of video here. i got to figure out how to cut this shit down to something watchable. So we'll see you guys up top. So that was the up close stuff. Let's have a vape. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the uh, the Vapresso Gemini, but still one of my absolute favorite tanks out there. Um, but I will say, I went to a cloud comp this weekend um, over at uh, Pontiac Vape Lounge, and I used this new uh, Sense Rebuildable, the uh, the Heracles RTA. Um, I think I finished first in regulated, or I'm sorry, in outlaw. Um, but that's up for, that's up for debate. There is a video out there. Um, but, uh, I f ended up placing actually second in Outlaw and in the mech side using this tank. So if you haven't checked out the, uh, the Heracles Plus, or no, I'm sorry, the Heracles RTA, absolutely amazing. So now that we've got the up close out of the way, I want to, uh, show you some of the things from, kind of from the inside. Some of the things the public doesn't really usually get to see. Um, that my relationship with Adam has afforded, you know, in seeing some of these processes. So I'm going to jump to a video first about the uh, um, kind of the process for how he puts the size battery that he does in here, because in boxes of similar size, you generally get a 1400, uh, a 3s 1400, um, maybe even a 3s 1200. Um, so there's some things that he does to these boxes to uh, on the inside with a milling machine to uh, to get it. The, the flush top connector to get the bigger battery in to uh, and even a, a super super neat technique he does to uh, to actually do this this spiral pattern on the outside of the box you'll see in the video that is uh, really really awesome so I'm gonna switch over to those and also gonna be giving them one away so Adam announces that in that video so let's we'll switch over to those be back shortly so here we have the man you gotta warn me when we're going on video, man. And he is drilling the recess to do the 510 flush. Right here, I'll show you these real quick. Well, I already through punched them for the 510. Um, so, this is 
what I got right here. I've already made the through punch. Got my jig set up on my end mill. I'm actually making the, the recess right now. So, um, I got a few done. Got some green ones, some pink ones, some red ones. Might be some blue ones. Yeah, I actually ordered a green box with a gray back door. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna look pretty dope, man. So if anybody wants a gray box with a green back door, hit me up. <laughs> So this is the process of getting that super flush 510 connection. Yeah, this is only for the, obviously a little more to go in the box. Also, I'm going to make a pocket cut inside, but, uh, you know, aesthetically, this is probably the most important part of the exterior of the box. Right. Um, just something I don't really see people do. I've seen some recessed 510s. I've seen some, I've seen some pretty shoddy done recessed 510s. I've never yeah. seen them done well. I mean, that's... The reason we started making boxes, we just thought there was, not we, it's the reason I started making boxes. We thought, thought you could a, do it better. thought there was a lot lacking out there, especially in, and I'll call these garage style boxes, you know what I mean? Just because yeah. they have a back door that comes off, but I mean, obviously we get a little when more. When you look on the inside, there's definitely no garage door on the, in, no, garage no, door no, work no. on the inside. Um, so anyway, basically we just make a 42,000 cent incision in this box and 22 millimeter end mill bit. Um, so every one of these are die cast a little bit different. I have to watch my wheel down here. This is a manual end mill. But you'll see right here, as I start to scrape that box, I always have to reset back to zero. That's why I say it, on, on a die cast box, you're never gonna be just perfect. So as my zero is set and I'm starting to cut into it, that's gonna make a nice, clean 42,000 incision into this box. Here it's cutting nice and clean. We'll rest at 42,000 right there. But 42 thousandths makes it that one millimeter thick, supposedly 510 connection is just perfect. I always let it sit there and eat just a little bit because I want that really nice hard corner on. Then we'll just back it off and take a look. So what all can people get done custom on this? Man, I can, you know, I kind of got those few things out there, but I mean, if you come up with something, and I'll show you one I've been working on, I've actually got to do another one, I have another one, but, um, you know, like my box, oh, where's my box? So this is my personal box that I carry all the time, and it was just one I kind of messed around with and ended up end milling the sides. I think I might, if you don't mind, have you do mine that way. Yeah, no problem, man. So I anyway, I'm actually, side. you know, I tote this around all the time. It's kind of, I didn't know, I didn't really think anybody would be that interested in it. That's why I never advertised it, but... Um, the more I've towed it around, the more people want it. So there, that's actually going to be an XL with milled sides. So that's the new version that holds 3,000 uh, 3, milliamp. Yeah. 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 I mean, it'll, it'll be plus enclosure. So you're talking 30% more battery life than a Relo in that box? Um, not quite 30, it'd be 20% more, 20 more battery life. For 7,500 average if you were using 25 hours? Yeah, so yeah 25, 2,500 milliamps, you get 500 more, so divide 25 by fives, yeah, you get about 20% more. 20% more battery than the three battery reload. And I will say this, keep in mind, uh, a LiPo battery can be run down a lot further than 18650s without hurting the cell. Right. So you actually get a lot more so what do you, usable life. In these fries, because I know you pre-program more than, actually, I think you're the only person that pre-programs to the level you do. And my up close shows some of these features. How uh, how low will you let that battery drain? 3.09 is the lowest I'll let it drain. I know some other... They stop there are some other companies 2. out there that let it go lower, but 3.09 is soft cell cutout. So what soft cell cutout means is when I'm actually holding the firing button, what voltage is available, not not just sitting here. So um, when you're firing, obviously you have less voltage. Right. Um, that's where your soft cell cutout's at. And anybody knows 18650, if you get below 3.2 or so, you're really in the danger territory of hurting that cell. Um, Lipos are not like the 18650s. It took me a little while to get used to that, man. They're made for RC cars. They're made to be run wide open, uh, you know, 100% duty cycle and drained all the way down and, and fast recharge. So right. um, they make a, for me, make an excellent battery. Um, and I'm not just saying one LiPo in general. LiPo battery designs in general are really great. The thing about having a, a three cell LiPo battery is, um, you know, if you get carried away or get your positives and negatives crossed out, you're dealing with 12 volts right there, and that battery is going to fry instantly. So it's yeah. not, I'd say it's not something you really want the next door neighbor's kid fucking around with and building, in my opinion, but um, All right. everybody's got their thing, I guess. There you go. Now, we talked earlier about potentially giving one away in this review, so uh, how do we want to go about doing that? What do we want to have folks do in order to have a chance to win it? 
I'll tell you what, man. I'll, I'll, I'll give the box to you if you'll do this for me. Uh -huh. Have your subscribers and viewers come join our Facebook uh, Vaporize Nomads Clothes Group. Uh -huh. And check out the Vaporize Nomads uh, YouTube channel. If they'll subscribe, uh -huh. you know, join the group and subscribe to the channel, hell yeah, we'll give one away, man. Okay. no issue with that. Well, so that In just, fact, I'll tell you what, we won't even make one to give away. When we give one away, we'll let that person let customize, customize order it like it. they want. There you go. And so the only thing they'll have to do, and we'll do it on randomized.org on the Vaporize Nomads show, they just got to join the group, uh, and I'll put the link in the video description. Yep. Join the group and uh, subscribe to YouTube. No yep. screenshots needed. Yep. Subscribe just... to Vaporize Nomads YouTube channel. Obviously, you already subscribed to JC West. I hope me and yep. JC do a live show every Tuesday night. If you're not familiar with that, but um, we'd love to have y'all on. We'd yep. like to beat that up a little bit. So we'll uh, we'll put a link in to join the Nomad uh, Facebook group, and we'll give it away not this Tuesday. Which would be the 22nd? Yeah, when is your review coming out? Uh, tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow? Okay, yeah, uh, we'll do it a week from this coming Tuesday. Right, right a week from I'm not this sure coming what Tuesday. Is, but yeah, we'll give it away live on the show. It's more great. Um, to make sure your name gets in the drawing, just make sure to post That'll be the below. Fifth. Huh? That'll be the fifth. Okay, make sure to post below Jamie's video. JC West, um, on this video you're watching on YouTube right now, just make sure... Post your name right below, and we'll just check. It. Make sure you're subscribed, and you're on the Facebook page, and you're yeah, in the drawing. Yeah. Easy yeah. enough, huh? So yeah, just just uh, leave a comment with uh, subscribed, yeah, um, subscribe. and your Facebook name. We'll verify the subscription. We'll put them in random.org, and then we'll uh, you can get your box customized however you like. So final thoughts of thought, thoughts and impressions on the Boss 3000. Um, for me, and again, this is all purely opinion. People, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. If you value my opinion on things, um, then uh, I, you know, I highly recommend it. I know there are other boxes kind of in this, around the same price point. Um, I've played with some cheaper boxes, like take the Hot Sig box. I'll give you an example on the Hot Sig. I don't know if they use clone DNA 200 chips or if they use like factory seconds or something. But we've actually took them apart and, and actually took pictures where there's like different fonts on some of the writing. There's different, um, now everything seems to be in the same place as far as circuitry and all that stuff. But like especially with the fonts and the, the boldness of the fonts, the type of fonts, um, and some other, some other just things that are just slightly different. You can tell there's something different about those chips than the chips that come directly with the, uh, they, they come directly from Evolve, the way that these are, these are coming. Um, another example, take like the Triumph box, it does the same thing that the Hot Sig box did, which was, as soon as you plug it into eScribe, and I actually saw on a website with somebody, on, sell, with a company selling Triumph boxes, that said when you plug it into eScribe, you, uh, it would void your warranty. Well, on Hot Sig, two Hot Sigs, um, and a Triumph box, they absolutely did. As soon as we plugged them up to eScribe, it fried the fucking chip. I don't know why that happens, but you know, so that's the $150 box. Um, you know, there's some $200 boxes that get you into the, you know, the 1400 milliamp hour, 1600 milliamp hour. Um, in my opinion, not near the quality, not near the craftsmanship. Um, so, you know, price, but for a lot of people, price is a factor. Um, and I think that the warranty that Adam offers on this um, at the price point, I think they, they start at $249 or $259. And then they go up depending on up to 290, I think is the ceiling, um, and that's if you go with you know like different material buttons. You can do custom buttons, you can do custom engravings everywhere, you know. And every time he has to take this to his engraver, to the engraver guy, you know that, that there's an additional cost for that. But I do think the ceiling is somewhere right around 290, kind of 250 is the floor. Um, you know, for what's with what's out there on the market today at this price point. Um, I, I could not see myself at this stage buying a different DNA 200 device, um, actually at any price point, because I tried the $150 hot sick thinking a deal would happen and blew, blew up fucking two of them. Um, and again, my experience at the $200 price range with the Vapor Shark and a few other boxes, again, some really bad experiences. So, 
what I know I'm getting in quality for me is worth the price difference. Um, somebody just walked in the door, so it might have distracted me for a second. Um, but other than that, I really do love this box. I really enjoy using it. It is my all-day, everyday vape. Um, I took it in the pool the other day to see if it was water resistant, and when I was lounging around the pool, um, you know, with it just sitting out there, I would get, you know, water would get on the device. Water was, you know, definitely everywhere, um, and the device operated with no problems. Um, but then I actually fully submerged it. Um, I did vape it for a few minutes, and had I cut, had my finger over the charge port, um, I wouldn't have blew the fuse. Uh, but other than blowing the fuse, it come right back. So uh, we was able to get that all straightened away. So, you know, it's a good durable box. It's nice and sealed. Good battery life. A phenomenal battery life with the 1800 3S. Um, and actually, there's an XL version with a 3S 3000 milliamp hour battery. And that's what you saw him doing that little milling thing on. Um, it's a little bit bigger, but you're talking about a low killer there. That dude is, uh, that's, you know effectively almost 9,000 milliamp hours versus um, say you're using Samsung 25 hours that are uh, what are they 2,500 milliamp hours 7,500 milliamp hours in a Relo versus 9,000 milliamp hours in uh, in a Boss 3000 XL and not a huge difference in, in, in weight and size so final thoughts I love it man double thumbs up doesn't mean it's perfect but it is uh, for me the best one that I've used and seen so far so well, that's it Peace out, guys.